We're talking with uh, Professor Alan Gelzo, Princeton College, uh, Princeton University, uh, one of the uh, recognized prominent uh, American historians, particularly of Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War. We're talking about the 1619 Project. Uh, one of the corrosive effects of the 1619 Project that have me and many Americans concerned is that the Pulitzer Center is promoting this as curricula to public school systems and private schools throughout the country. And they brag now of having had some 4,500 classrooms adopt this curriculum, including some citywide school districts, five or six citywide school districts in the country have adopted this as their curriculum, and it prevents such a warped view of American history. What's going to come out of the students who go through these classes? What will their view of America be in terms of what it should be? Well, I think that's probably the most serious concern that I have this way, because as uh, an academic historian, I have to deal all the time with historical mistakes, historical misrepresentations, uh, historical manipulations of things. That, you, you spend as much time doing that as outfielders spend catching fly balls. And that in itself is not necessarily a surprise to me. I'm used to it. What is disturbing is the way the Pulitzer Center, and, and I should say here, the Pulitzer Center is in fact connected strongly with the New York Times. Mm -hmm. The Pulitzer Center is promoting this as a history curriculum for K through 12 education. And in the data that I have seen, I, I have seen cited something in the order of 3,500 classrooms in the United States already using elements of the 1619 Project, whole urban school districts mandating the use of the 1619 Project. And in this case, the school districts that I understand have been identified that way are those of Buffalo, Buffalo, New York, Washington, D.C., uh, Chicago, and Detroit. And for all that I know, there may be more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned 4,500. It could be that. But at least those are the numbers that I have seen. If that's the case, then, then what is going to come out of that? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll put it two ways. Think of some specifics and then think of a comparison. The specifics are this. The results of teaching American history by the standard of the 1619 Project will be, first of all, the school children will learn that an open economy, capitalism, they will learn that capitalism is a form of totalitarianism because capitalism is modeled on plantation slavery, according to the 1619 Project. Now, never mind that Slavery existed for centuries and eons in human experience before capitalism ever came to pass. I mean, we don't really see capitalism fully formed as an economic system until we get ourselves into the 18th century. And we don't really see it given any kind of theoretical shape until we meet Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations in 1776. So the idea that somehow capitalism is slavery. This is, this is almost an Orwellian formula, but this is the conclusion that, that school children will take away from it. Capitalism is a form of totalitarianism. And the consequence of that is that we should then, of course, think kindly of the alternatives, which would doubtless be socialism. Second consequence, we should pay reparations for slavery. And Nicole Hannah-Jones has, has been forthright in interviews that she has given in saying that she expects that the 1619 Project will be an impetus towards some kind of reparations bill for slavery. And that reverses Abraham Lincoln's formula in his second inaugural address, where Lincoln talked about reparations, but how did he talk about them? He talked about them in terms of the Civil War, in which every drop of blood drawn by the lash is paid for by one drawn by the sword. I mean, it's interesting in the 1619 Project how the Civil War scarcely makes an appearance. The idea that 350,000 Union soldiers died to put down the slaveholders' rebellion, to put an end to slavery, that simply doesn't get onto the screen. And I'm thinking, were their deaths really in vain? Lincoln said at Gettysburg that we should
should make every effort to prove that these honored dead have not died in vain. And what the 1619 Project tells us is that, in fact, yes, that's really true. They did. They died in vain. And for that reason, we're going to present a bill for reparations for slavery. Now, reparations for slavery has been talked about for 150 years. And there are questions about it which to this day have never been answered. At first blush, reparations for slavery sounds like a good idea, compensation for unrequited toil, as Lincoln put it. The problem is that after 150 years, who pays whom? That's all become very, very unclear. And trying to sort all of that out would require more than the wisdom of Solomon. That, however, is never articulated in the 1619 Project. Instead, the conclusion that K-12 through kids will be allowed to come away from is we should be paying reparations for slavery. Third thing that students will learn, history is nothing more than a web of narratives and interpretations. So any connection of history to historical fact can be ignored. Is that what we want school children to learn about history? I don't think so. Because if that's what we learn about history, why don't we take it and apply it to science? Why don't we take it and apply it to, well, I almost want to say computer coding. Imagine the mess that would, that would result. Imagine applying it to your bank account. I mean, when you go into the bank, you want the teller at the bank to get things right down to the last penny, don't you? Uh, you? You don't want to have the teller explain to you that there's a certain narrative and there's a certain interpretation of your bank account and that you have to be content with that. Uh, if you did that, the first thing that would be happening would be charges of fraud. Well, if that's how we treat our everyday finances, should we treat our history any less seriously? But treating it that less seriously is exactly what the 1619 Project is going to promote. The third thing is, the fourth thing is this. School children will come away from the 1619 Project believing that the America, whom Lincoln described as the world's last best hope, is really just a swamp of guilt, resentment, accusation, and lethal mistrust. And Hannah Jones herself has said, very frankly, what she hopes to promote by the 1619 Project is guilt. Is guilt what we want to build in our children? That's a pathology. That is a psychological difficulty, if not outright disease. Is that really what we want to inculcate at the K-12 through level? I certainly hope not.